Today, we will be learning about logical fallacies and how they are used in persuasive writing. We will discuss four different types of fallacies and analyze examples of each. Let's begin. What comes to mind when you think of the word argument? Do you visualize two people fighting? This week, we have spent time studying and learning about persuasion. Persuasion uses arguments, or logic, to present a claim. Persuasive arguments are comprised of claims which use supporting evidence to prove a point. Have you ever had a discussion and someone makes a statement that does not seem quite logical? He or she probably used a fallacy. Simply put, fallacies are errors in logic. They are quite common and quite convincing. Many times, authors will purposely use a fallacy to deceive a reader. This means a reader must read critically to ensure that all information presented is valid. There are many, many fallacies, far too many for us to look at in this presentation. We will be examining four of the more common fallacies, hasty generalization, slippery slope, appeal to authority, and attacking the person. The first fallacy we will examine is called a hasty generalization. This is an assumption made about a large group of people based on a single case. It's called hasty because we make the assumption quickly without using much or any research. Think of this example. While in school, you meet James, who is from Maine. You find out he loves lobster and quickly think, if James loves lobster, everyone in Maine must love lobster. This is a hasty generalization. Imagine going down a steep hill without brakes. A slippery slope fallacy is somewhat like that. It is false assumption believing that one thing will lead to another and then another and then another until something really bad happens. It does not allow for the idea that one can stop at any point on the slope. It does not necessarily have to lead to the in inevitable bad thing. Consider this example. If you buy this punk album, then you will buy the Avengers. Before you know it, you will be a punk wearing green hair and tattoos. The events do not have to happen in this order. It may be that I buy the album and enjoy listening to it, but not with the slippery slope fallacy. It has to keep going and going until something bad happens. Appealing to authority is not what you may think. It occurs when an author tries to get people to agree with him or her by providing an authority who is not really an expert. Imagine your dentist giving you advice on your heart condition, or a football player discussing chemistry when he knows nothing about it. Most often we have seen this with celebrities. Another example would be Brad Pitt discussing gun control laws when he knows very little on the subject. We hear the attacking the person fallacy routinely. This occurs when an author presents negative things on the opponent instead of challenging the opponent's ideas. Here's an example. Allison Smith is a bad mother whose idea of parenting is leaving her children with the nanny. Therefore, we shouldn't listen to her ideas on classroom improvements. By attacking Allison as a mother, the author did not have to address Allison's teaching abilities. This technique is often used to discredit someone, yet the attack is unrelated to the opponent's ideas. Although they appear in persuasive writing, authors should work to avoid fallacies because they weaken his or her argument. Fallacies also make an author appear untrustworthy. To prevent fallacies, remember to list the evidence for your main claims. Also, spend time reflecting on errors in logic you have utilized. Finally, make sure you have adequate and relevant support for each claim. Remember, larger claims require more proof. 
Now that you have completed learning about policies, please return to your module and complete your Let's Practice activity.